on a and &E. During two months of racing at Del Mar, more than 600,000 fans pass through these turnstiles. Many pay $4 to watch from the grandstands. Others spend up to $65,000 to watch from their private luxury suites. I didn't know the horse I named after you. Oh, please don't mention it. No, he's still running. Yeah, it's still running. Still running. <laughs> All eyes are on the races, but around the track there are a hundred things going on that you never see. Just 45 minutes before the race, thoroughbreds are checked into the receiving barn. For positive identification, each horse has an ID number tattooed under its lip. Here, the tattoo is matched to registration documents, and markings on the thoroughbred are compared to photos. It's all to make absolutely sure that the horse you're betting on is really the one entered in the race. And four, two. Thoroughbred racing is big business. Every day, nearly $40 million is wagered in the United States alone. It is the ultimate run for the money. Today, at just this track, more than $2 million in cash will be wagered. Trainer Bob Baffert feels like he has to get in on the action. There's nothing worse than winning a race, and if you have a horse pay like $20, and you don't have a dime on it, it's almost embarrassing. Because people are like, did you have bet on them? Well, yeah, of course I did, you know, but I mean, you sort of feel sometimes that if you bet on your horses, you're gonna jinx them. Sometimes I feel that way, and I, and I won't bet on them. I'm not allowed to bet. I am allowed for, the owner can bet for me to win only. Uh, no place or show betting, uh, no gimmick bets. In other words, no exactas or anything like that. If, if an owner does bet for me, it's gotta be a, a win ticket on the nose. The cash all flows through a well-guarded counting room at Del Mar. This is the money room? This is the money room. Behind this closed door is where Bill Navarro is responsible for balancing the books. He gave me exclusive access to see how they count, wrap, and weigh the piles of money. That weighs the money. Each bill weighs about a gram, so it is that sensitive that if it's short one bill, we could find out. Short one dollar bill, you would mm. you would know because it wouldn't weigh the right amount. That's correct. It's all cash. People can't put vets on a credit card or anything. That's correct. It's all cash and carry. Gotta have the cash. Gotta have the cash. What is the biggest bet that you have ever known to be made here? Uh, we had a two hundred thousand dollar bet last week. Really? Yes. Did the guy win? The guy won. All that cash gets piled up in one room. That's a million dollars sitting there. Each one of these bricks. These are called bricks, have a thousand pieces in them. So if you look at the corners, you can tell how much money each brick is worth, $100,000. But the safe is empty. No money is kept here. Each night, it's loaded into these cans and hauled off to the bank in two armored cars. The horses have been checked. The jockeys have been weighed and the bets have been placed. And whether you're watching from a luxury booth or the grandstand, you can feel the electricity. But nothing gets going without this man, the starter. My job is to get all the riders and the horses in the starting gate and get them out as safe as possible. I am told that this is one of the most dangerous parts of the race. It is. That's a scary thing for the horse to do, to get inside that gate, right? Right, right. And you know, just like anything else, an animal will only be locked up so long. You're the guy that makes that sound, right? Right. Or this right here. Oh, that's it. So you start those races. Right. As soon as you see that everybody's all in there and settled down? Right. It's never steal. You have to use your best judgment and when to, when to kick it, and then you do the best you can. I still got one on it. That jock tied on? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait. Oh, where they go? You got a one. I lost From one. high above the race comes a voice that everyone at the track knows. Copper two being sent along will get the early lead. But with a face they never see. Then we come back to hold the helm, and you've got to want his last five off. The man behind the binoculars is the track announcer, Trevor Denman. Half ecstatic now getting off the rail and going to go to his outside. Funny meeting right there. So how does Trevor keep track of all those names and colors in eight races a day? 
it's just a matter of uh, a memory. It's a little mental game. It's an association of name to color. I look at the horses on the way to the gate and memorize their c color, the jockey's colors, the jockey's silks to the name. Commit them to memory, and when the gates open, hopefully you know who's who. Because so much money is on the line, race stewards are employed by the state to keep the contest fair. Like referees, from their positions above the track, they scrutinize the entire race. All clear. 10 4. Brave Hawk coming, flying late, and so is Cleft Note coming out the clouds as well. It's so Sometimes it takes a photograph to tell who wins. The outside, so late. Ice Tornado, COCs, and Brave Hawk and Cleft Note right there in court. Sophisticated cameras capture the moment the thoroughbreds cross that finish line. The photo finished booth is in fact a dark room. The film is processed in minutes and the results announced. Okay, five, four, three, two, six, all clear. Past the eight ball, they come and we've got another great horse race on our hands. They know, they know. From the breeding farms, to the million dollar auctions, through training and onto the track. Thoroughbred horse racing, the biggest gamble in sports. But for those who have tasted victory, it's worth every penny. When that horse crosses the finish line and you hit that winner circle, you feel like King Kong. You feel like you're out there fishing with 10 guys in the boat and you got the only big one. Now I know why people pay all these millions of dollars for horses, because you can't put a price on that feeling. That particular feeling is worth billions to me. You know? But Prince Salman won't get that feeling with his number one thoroughbred again. Point Given went on to win the million dollar Traverse Stake at Saratoga, but suffered a strained tendon, a career ending injury. These horses are so fragile, you just forget how fragile they are. And one misstep and uh, they strain something or pull a ligament or whatever. Retiring him like that so soon is like just taking uh, Tiger Woods off the, the golf tour. So Point Given has been retired to a breeding farm where his stud fee started out at $125,000, a princely sum in this, the sport of kings.